Hello, thank you so much for joining me today for Give Him 15. The title of today's post is Taking Cities for God. I'll be leading us in communion at the end of today's post. If possible, pause your machine uh, or stop your reading, get some juice, wine ready, and some bread so you can join me. Communion is more than remembering and honoring. It is a declaration of the release of and celebration of victory. A word I received from Chuck Pierce a few years back is applicable to the recent word regarding overthrowing Baal's hold on America. I've heard a word from God, Chuck Pierce told me. I was excited. Chuck is a prophet, after all. What pearl of wisdom was about was he about to share with me? Directions for my future? A profound nugget of revelation? If nothing truly spiritual, perhaps at least something exciting, like who would win the Super Bowl? Don't laugh. He's done that before. I was expectant. We were in Israel, the place of Jesus' birth and ministry. Chuck probably tapped into the timing of Christ's return to earth or maybe who the Antichrist is. Who knows what he had picked up from the revelation-filled airwaves of Jerusalem. I heard Holy Spirit say, I'm going to pioneer Hebron again. He stated with a great deal of confidence. I, in return, gave him a mix of deer in headlights and you've got to be kidding looks. What does that mean? I asked the prophet. I don't know, Chuck replied. What do you mean you don't know? You're a prophet for crying out loud, I reminded him. Well, I heard Holy Spirit say it, but I don't know what it means, he stated. It's for you. He'll tell you what it means. Prophets can be annoying. I wasn't completely surprised. Chuck has done this to me before. God will sometimes give him only a word or phrase, just enough to bait me. I, then, have to dig and discern for myself what it means. Must be a game God and prophets sometimes play with us normal folks. So I locked in on Hebron. The names of people and places in Old Testament times were important. Their meanings often holding prophetic significance. Bethel, for example, where Jacob had a profound encounter with God means the house of God. Jerusalem means the city of peace or wholeness. Hebron, the place Holy Spirit said he would pioneer again, means friendship, league, confederacy, or federation. Though the word doesn't literally mean covenant, the concept is certainly there. Hebron is a strong alliance born out of a close relationship, thus covenantal friendship. Because of this meaning, God made it the final resting place of Abraham, the covenant friend of God. In fact, Adam and Eve, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob and Leah were all buried at Hebron. It is easy to see the significance of this place. With this meaning in mind, Hebron became symbolic of several things. It's the highest city in Israel. Therefore, covenantal friendship with God is the highest or the loftiest privilege we are afforded. It is also the, th the thing Satan most wants to steal. Hebron was a city from which King David first ruled. Authority is released 
as we walk in intimacy and covenantal friendship with God. Hebron became one of Israel's six cities of refuge. These were cities structured to house and protect individuals who had accidentally taken another person's life. The unfortunate people fled to the nearest city of refuge in order to prevent a family member of the slain person from enacting revenge. It was inconvenient, but better than vengeance killings. The New Testament tells us these cities of refuge became types or pictures of Christ to whom we have fled for refuge, Hebrews 6. According to the Talmud, the best lambs for sacrifice came from Hebron. Therefore, this city pictures the salvation, safety, and refuge we find in Christ, the Lamb of God. Satan hates geographical locations like Hebron that have become meaningful to God and his people. When possible, he seeks to defile these places using perversion, violence, covenant breaking, idolatry, and the shedding of innocent blood. Hebron, as a picture of Christ our Lamb and refuge, and a picture of covenantal friendship with God, became a prime target for Satan's hatred. And in the four centuries, between Abraham and Joshua, demonized giants had overtaken and defiled the city. Arba, sounds like a giant's name, doesn't it? Arba, the greatest of all the Anakim, or giants, made it his home and renamed Hebron after himself, Kiriath Arba, the city of Arba. By the time the 12 spies of Israel were sent by Moses to surveil the promised land, three more giants, direct descendants of Anak, or the Anakim is the plural form, giants, direct descendants of the first giant, Anak, had inhabited Hebron, three more of them. This holy place representing friendship and covenant with God was now ruled by giants and was a place of terror. It so terrified 10 of the 12 spies, in fact, that they brought back an evil report of fear and unbelief to the entire nation of Israel. There's no way we can take the land promised us through Abraham, they stated. The giants are simply too big, too powerful. Caleb, one of the 12 spies, was indignant, seeing that Arba and the other giants had defiled this holy city and desecrated the final resting place of Israel's patriarchs. He was angry. His response was to ask Moses for this very mountaintop city as his inheritance. We can conquer these giants and their fortified cities, guys, Caleb told the fearful Israelites, and I'll take the biggest. His appeal failed, however, and because of the Israelites' fear and unbelief, Caleb had to wait 45 years for this opportunity. After four decades of wilderness wandering by the unbelieving generation and another five years of war, it was time. Faith filled Caleb, now 85 years old, declared, Give me my mountain. And asking for Hebron, now called the city of Arba, this warrior was asking for more than a city. He was requesting the assignment of conquering the greatest stronghold of the land, ruled by the greatest giant. What a guy. Caleb did conquer Kiriath Arba and its giants. 
He then renamed it, renamed it Hebron. In the words of my prophetic friend, Chuck, he pioneered Hebron again. In that holy place, Caleb enjoyed a covenantal friendship with God. He also paved the way for it to become David's first capital city and a picture of Christ, our Savior and refuge. When Holy Spirit declared through Chuck that he was going to pioneer Hebron again, he was announcing, I'm going to raise up and empower Caleb's to remove spiritual giants ruling regions of the earth, places like America, transforming them into strongholds of life. They will transform spiritually dark cities and nations into places of salvation, refuge, covenantal friendship with God, places from which the rule and authority of Christ, who sits on the throne of David, can be seen. The church around the world is moving into this era. We will soon experience our finest and most productive season of harvest. The body of Christ will see at least a billion souls saved in the next 10 or 20 years. What a thought. Perhaps more than have been saved in the previous 2000 Portions of the earth that have been ruled by spiritual giants will be liberated. Evil forces have ruled some regions of the planet since Adam's fall. But others, like America, have had covenants and friendships with God defiled, just as occurred at Hebron. Caleb hearted, fearless warriors will pioneer these Hebrons again. Now, let's pray and partake of communion. Father, we have a covenantal friendship with you through Christ. We have fled to him for refuge, and can now live at Hebron. He conquered the giant of spiritual death, freed us from its stronghold. Thank you for this word regarding Hebron, that we, through Christ's victory at the cross, will conquer spiritual giants and pioneer Hebrons again. Baal's hold on America will end. You have shown us through Hebron that the key to overcoming giants and moving in high levels of authority is covenantal friendship with you through Christ the Lamb. We thank you for the salvation, refuge, protection, and covenant friendship we have with you that we have found through his victory at Calvary. And as we partake of the bread now, we celebrate and proclaim this victory. Take the bread. We also know that our King and Redeemer gave us his warrior nature, that we, like Caleb, are more than conquerors through him. We ask you for higher levels of this nature to operate in us so that we would have a fierce determination to see people free from sin 
oppression and every attack of Satan. May we truly be liberators. And we pray for America. We ask for the greatest revival in the history of this nation to burst forth. We pray for the youth, our schools, universities. Come to them with your power and love. We pray for inner cities and places overrun with poverty and hopelessness. We ask you to be the hero of these without hope. Save them. And we ask you for revival in the church. Send us your fire. Let the greatest renewal that has ever hit the body of Christ come to the American church in this hour. And may we see our destiny as a nation restored. We will be your Caleb's, taking the gospel of Jesus Christ and his kingdom to the ends of the earth. We decree that this is so through the covenantal blood of Christ. Partake now. Thank you, Father, for the body and blood of Jesus. And it be applied now to our nation. Deliverance is ours. Thank you. Well, portions of today's post were taken from my book, Giants Will Fall. Easy read, small little book. Wish I had one here. I don't to show you. Giants Will Fall fall. Very encouraging, easy read. Thank you for joining me. See you on Monday.